Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is the uh, front northern facing bed in my yard. As you can see, I have three azaleas back there. This is a huge crepe myrtle. And this bed, we would like to have more evergreen color in it. Um, we have double play doozies and some privets back here and they all lose their leaves over the winter. So this bed looked pretty bare. Um, these are Radiant abelias. We used to have Indian hawthorns in this spot, um, but they died in an ice storm several years ago. So I'm also going to be potting up um, Proven Winners Gumfrina. These beautiful guys lived and partied over the winter. I had cut them back and put them in the greenhouse and even with the greenhouse freeze we were able to overwinter them so I've already gotten started and I've gotten several planted up these are kind of a, a staple in your North Texas no, summer garden um, they will provide you with endless color let's go over here despite the heat and the drought so they are staple in mine and I just like to combine them with different colors and textures throughout the summer. Easy peasy. The other thing I'm planting up is abelia, the Rose Creek abelia. Uh, I have some in the backyard and they are rocking in the summertime. And the rest of the year they're evergreen and just an adorable little mound. Well, I say little, but just a nice round shape that I love. And the foliage is just real pretty. And it's a nice shade of green. So they take sun to part sun. The ones in the back get part sun and they flowered beautifully last summer. The butterflies and bees love them. So we're going to be amending this soil. It's kind of a necessity here in North Texas just because of our clay soils. So we will um, get started. Thanks for joining us. So first thing we're going to do is be lifting up these bricks. They've kind of sunken into the clay over time. So we're going to lift these up so that we can add more, um, add height to the bed. So we don't necessarily want these, the feet of these sitting way low into the clay. So we're going to get these stones back up and get it off the ground. All right, so this is the landscaper's mulch we use. It just has a lot of um, woody material in it. And this we get from, just by the truckload from Living Earth. So we're gonna mix this. This is the pea gravel we use. We get it at Lowe's. Any pea gravel will do. It's a lot cheaper. This is also what we stir into our soil. A lot of people use expanded shale. What the expanded shale, shale will do that the pea gravel won't. Um, this pea gravel will not improve your soil. It might help um, improve drainage and just give the roots some air, help them breathe. But expanded shale will actually go in and improve your soil. It will absorb um, the moisture from the heavy clay soil. So over time, it has shown improvements, whereas this won't. So if you have a nice budget, definitely expanded shale will be um, preferable. But if you have a limited budget and just a lot of beds that you need to amend, this is where the pea gravel comes in. And this is, this is why we use it. Yeah. The Living Earth Organic Compost. Step by step, we're going to raise them up. So you can see now it's raised. It gives us a couple of more inches to add some height. And we're going to go ahead and get these guys planted up. I should mention that they had um, meteor shower verbena in here so my fingers are crossed that it has reseeded and should start popping up soon this bed faces north so i would expect them to pop up a little bit later than most other things but i'm remaining hopeful so i'm digging the hole and you can see this builder's clay way down deep and then keep in mind that's where the roots are going to be so if your plant is sitting in that, you're gonna get root rot. So it's important, that's why they um, always instruct you to dig wide and deep 
is because we want to amend this. We want to take out this builder's clay. It looks like this. Look at that. However, up here, there's some clay that falls apart. Okay, so you wanna, you wanna mix in some good clay so that your plant doesn't just sink into that full builder's clay down below. This is the landscaper's mix. I put it in the tub here. I'm gonna add a little bit of compost and a little bit of pea gravel. And I just stir it up. Add some in. Add a little more pea gravel. You definitely wanna leave little pieces of clay, which is what I have done. If you take all of the clay out, when this gets wet, it's just gonna sink because this is all this beautiful soil. It's just gonna sink into the clay and form a uh, big wet mess at the very bottom, which is where your roots are. That's the last thing you want. So definitely, that's why it's called mending. Make sure you don't take all of that clay out of there. This is what my hole looks like now. So I've got the pea gravel layered pretty deeply. I am gonna add some biotone when I pulled it out of the pot. It came out like this. So we'll see what happens. I got it at Callaway's and there's a year long um, return policy. So we'll just hope for the best. This one's all planted. We're gonna finish up the rest. All right, so they are planted up. We are going to mulch. Always have the airplane spine on top of us. Straight from DFW. It's kind of a lemon, lemony green color, beautiful foliage. And this takes full sun. Um, it does make a white flower that blooms in the late summer. So once it's established, it's drought tolerant and it gets up to 36 inches tall and wide. I've given it some time so that the mulch blends out and you can see how good they look. So I'll step back, the azaleas are starting to fill out fantastic so here's the final product it's gonna look fantastic I've got some wave petunias going on and until this holly drops all of its leaves this holly drives me nuts because every year when I'm trying to get my spring beds planted up and mulched I can't because the leaves are falling look at this and it's constant so I've got that one there I'm gonna I've got another one here and then we're gonna go over here and here. So they are looking good. And my azaleas are starting to come into bloom. These front beds have been amended already, so I didn't have to add anything today. Um, I did add some flower tone when I planted it just to get it through uh, a long-term fertilizer, and I'll probably just add a bloom booster throughout the summer months, but um, it looks great, and I expect it to kind of spread and fill out this whole area. It does take full sun, and it'll flower best for you when it is in full sun. So here's, here's the first one, again, right in front of my azaleas. There's a perennial salvia right in front of it that comes back. So that blue is going to be pretty with that pink behind it.
So this bed had pretty extensive roots in here from the magnolia tree, which is absolutely gorgeous. But it is causing a problem in this bed. A lot of things are just struggling. So it does need more water than typical. Um, thankfully, gumfrinas don't need a lot of water. And so I'm cutting some of these roots so that I can get a plant in here. And I will just have to maybe add more nutrients that the magnolia roots will otherwise seal from my gumfrina. So look at that, it's a pretty, pretty serious root. So I'm planting it a little far more forward than I had planned, but the other one is right there. So I think I'll be good. But otherwise these are gonna be chopped away. So the gumfrinas look great. There's one there, another one there, and then the last one here in front of, this is a limelight hydrangea. And then this gumfrina, I just realized I planted it backwards, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's gonna eventually grow forward towards the sun. So it is shaping up. And then we've got the one, two, three there. A quick scan over here. My tulips are still doing great. Daffodils are going crazy. And something that I find very interesting is these are my white drift roses. And they are coming in kind of peach. Look how pretty. I don't know if you can see the color, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. I do love that. I won't be sad as long as they're all like that. Anyways, I'll highlight a few more daffodils. I just want to see if you guys can see the size of this one. My goodness. And then look at that tulip. The color is almost iridescent the details. It's pretty amazing. Here's one coming in. Look at a little bit like ice cream sherbet too on the yummy side. As always guys thank you so much for joining us and watching our videos and subscribing to our channel. It really means so much to us um, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye.